You want to line them up ready? They're good. Whenever you guys are ready, you can start. All right. Hello, everyone. We are Rope Reel. I'm Jack Moran. This is Mil Patel, Angus Vandellos, and Bert Smith. I'd like to start off by asking a simple question. Can everyone please raise their hand if they've ever been water skiing, wakeboarding, tubing, wake surfing, or been on the boat while these activities are occurring? Great. Looks like most of you. That's awesome because me and my group mates share the same interest. Last summer, my best friend Kale got a brand new Mastercraft. We were on the Fox River pretty much every day. Nothing to worry about, no responsibilities. The only thing that would ever really put a damper on our parade is worrying about who's going to cover the boat, who's going to put the life jackets away, who's going to reel in the lines, make sure they're not tangled, stored properly so they're ready for the next use. This brings us to our solution, which is rope reel. Now, if you've ever used a tape measure before, you know a tape measure, you pull out the tape, lock it into place, measure whatever you'd like to be measured, then once you're done, unlock it and it comes back in with ease. That's where we got the idea for rope reel. It's a hardened plastic shell with a, um, a spring mechanism, just like a tape measure, where you can take your pre-existing 75 foot long rope, put it into our reel, and use it just like you would a tape measure on the back of your boat. I'd like to introduce you to Daniel Efron. Daniel Efron works a multi-million dollar job in the marketing industry. He enjoys water sports and he loves playing golf. I think it's safe to say he lives the luxurious lifestyle. He has two kids that are eager to get in the boat industry and Daniel Efron wants to enter or I'll introduce them to Rope Reel. So our total adjustable market is 13 million people and we scale that down to our serviceable adjustable market which is 150,000 people and these people are just like Daniel Efron in terms of living a luxurious lifestyle and are financially stable. They also love to boat and walk, do water sports and they also are the perfect fit for a product and staff persona. This is the first of our two Endeavor competitors, the Bell Strap Velcro Rope. You can get 10 of them for $25, and they're slightly customizable to coil size, but other than that, not really. The biggest downside for this product is very time and effort consuming, so you have to reel in the whole 75 foot rope, and then find the innermost coil and coil it around the whole thing. This is our second of two Endeavor competitors, the Airhead Linewinder. You can buy one of them for $8. Uh, they are not customizable whatsoever, and has the same downside of being very time and effort consuming. You have to use the two red handles on the side and crank in the entire rope and then store it. So we took this picture from our landing page which features our unique value proposition. Our product is efficient by reeling in and out the rope quickly for you by the click of a button. Uh, it also stores your rope so you don't have to deal with the hassle and mess. And then it's also safe by keeping your rope stored um, out of the way so that it's not able to be tripped on. Program to the financial. As we launch, we'll be spending $100 monthly on Facebook ads to reach 4,000 people in the target market. We chose Facebook ads because many parents use Facebook and we're advertising to parents to buy this product for their kids. Uh, Facebook ads, we can also specifically advertise to groups and we'd be advertising to boating groups and wake sport groups. As we grow, we'd want to advertise in the Boat US Magazine for three yearly features for $5,000. We'd reach 500,000 people in the target market and this magazine is a good fit for us because the average reader of this magazine has a $1.4 million net worth, makes $200,000 monthly, and 96.7% of them own a boat. This is our cost for each matrix. On the free side, we have our direct emails and messages, social media posts and videos. We'll be using these two in hopes to funnel people to our landing page and take action from there. And in the paid section, we have Facebook ads. Now, getting into our cost of goods, we did a lot of research uh, by manufacturing, and to make our actual reel, we'll be needing seven different materials from a uh, manufacturer that we came up with, Alibaba. And per rope reel per unit, it'll be uh, $48.15, and then we plan on selling that for $99.99. We got this through, um, through interviews. You know, people are definitely willing to pay this, if not more. So our gross profit margin would be $51.84. Now, I have to include that this does not include labor cost because um, when we launch our product, we'd like to attempt to assemble it ourselves. But obviously, if that doesn't work, we'll have to look into labor costs. So these numbers may change in the near future. So our first year revenue goal is $51,994. And in order to do this, we'll need to sell 520 rope reels. And then we will also sell the bulk of our product in the summer months because that's when boating season. All right, now once you get to our landing page, you'll be see that we will be testing the unique value proposition and the solution part of our business model. The reason why we wanted to do this is when we were conducting our interviews in the fall, a lot of people were concerned with the safety aspect of the product 
and how will we be able to assure a safe, the most safe ride for every user possible? We'll, on our landing page, you will also see our value propositions, including our safety, versatility, and efficiency. You will also be provided with a video that will go in depth about our product and how it will be used. Um, and then we'll use MailChimp to collect emails from our landing page. And once we get these emails, we can safely assume that our customers would potentially want to buy our product. And then we'll also send out surveys uh, to get our customers' input on how we can make our product better and what features should be on our product. Today we'll be asking for $200, 135 of those will be going towards a better whiteboard video, properly delineate our product on our website, show our, our unique value propositions and just what our product is. 65 would be going towards building a working prototype that would be letting people use to give us input on the features they do and don't like about the product. Thank you for listening. We are Rope Real, and I hope we reeled you guys in. <laughs>
I mean, are actual reels. Yeah, I'm just we kind of curious. Like this. Okay, so pretty compact. Yeah. It'll take in that, that amount. Of yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. Through your research, have you talked to any boat manufacturers or boat shops that sell accessories for boating? We talked to a couple of marinas in the Barrington area, or like further out, and they've all uh, said that they'd be interested because they also have a bunch of accessories they sell in the boat shop. Mm -hmm. And we talked to them. Yeah. Okay. Great, great applause for going to. Mm -hmm. And I would continue so, to yeah. maybe find someone that could be your partner or. Um, Right collaborator there. as you continue to go down because they're going to have some of the closest advice potentially of what would work on these types of boats, mm -hmm. what wouldn't work, etc. Sure. And they're a great customer resource mm -hmm. base because yeah. they've got people coming in for whatever reason. Um, talk to us a little bit about the, was it $65 you're proposing of the 200 to use for your prototype? Yeah. Um, talk to us a little bit of what does that get you in terms of the production of a prototype? Is it one? Is it two? Is no, it not just for one. One okay, and then if during the exploration process you're thinking you might want to evolve, that's part of what this exploration will be like. Would you have be looking at a cushion that might let you make another one, or, or what are you what are you thinking? Oh, we were just thinking of having one that we could let people use and we can just lend it out and get feedback back from it. Mm -hmm. uh, we could use multiple, but I was, we were just thinking one okay. at first. Yeah, like the idea is like. It, don't really understand the boating community this idea can be kind of hard to grasp so if we have it actually in front of someone mm -hmm. they can you know understand it a lot better i think we're kind of at the point that a lot of times with prototypes it's better to make more than one yeah. okay. because then you could get it in maybe the hands of five testers yeah. to get really robust feedback and also maybe one will break okay. <laughs> right. or you may want to make modifications based yeah. on the feedback that you yeah. Yeah. Make like a version one yeah. and and a version two, mm -hmm. at least a couple version ones, I agree with Scott, mm -hmm. to just do a couple of versions maybe so you can get it out there to a couple different people mm -hmm. that want to think about that. So tell me what you want in an ideal world out of the response to your Facebook campaign. If, if that goes well, what, what does that look like? Oh, we want to direct as many people towards the landing page as possible where they can watch the video about our products, learn more about our unique value. And then uh, we have a MailChimp area, which is what Britt talked about, where they can put in their email, receive updates on our product, and we'll be using that to like, gauge the interest. Like If people like go all the way to like, the buy section and they put their email, we'll know that people are like genuinely interested in our product. So as in a pre-order, you would want? You could say that, yeah. Yeah, and there's also space for feedback, so if they like, want anything done or they don't like something or they want something to be adjusted, we will also take that in there. Okay, so in terms of order of operations, you create the prototype, you film the video, and then you're doing this campaign to get feedback plus real life interviews with the boating community? Is, is that yes. about right? Or yes. Okay, is there any way else to get this video out faster? Can uh, you do animation that... So that's the whiteboard. The, the whiteboard video we, we could also use to like, just like show them the unique value and like have like some like mock up like what the product would look like and what it would do. Yeah, we, we already made one like, um, I'm gonna say a month back. It was just like a team video, but we uh, were looking, we want to have like more professional one done and we feel like that would really um, uh, show our products the way we want. Okay, so is that the video you guys want to use on your Facebook campaign? Yeah. Okay, that kind of stuff would be helpful yeah. to okay. just put in the presentation. Okay. Yeah. I think timing also is an issue. Right. Given that it, you only you have know, two you, months. You want people who are going to be independent, and so you're kind of dependent on people when they're putting their boats into the, the river or into the lake. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the day that all the bridges blew up in Chicago when everyone moved their boats out. But right, right. the point only is that, um, to Margarita's point, I think you know you kind of getting the message out there, it, you need that feedback from the potential customer, but you're going to be kind of late in the process mm -hmm. if, if you're kind of dependent upon the local community you provide. Sure. Uh, so it's maybe just a way to kind of think around that. Um, I don't know if there's boating clubs that you can go to even before people get their boats in the water and start presenting the prototype and getting feedback. Just a thought. Just regarding, like, like assume you're able to get the parts and build the prototype and everything is good. Like, how would you define, you know, let's fast forward to May, like, 
how would you, do you have a, a sense of how you would define demand for your product and, and interest in your product based on the, the, what you're doing between now and then with social media and uh, you know, Facebook emails and reaching out to prospective customers? Well, we have like insights on our social media and websites. You can see how many people like click the links and like are providing like advertisements and posts, how many people are viewing our profile and stuff like that. But then what more can you learn? Mm -hmm. I, I have a suggestion. Do, if you can quantify more when you come back, that would be great. You talked about your value proposition being efficiency. How much time does it take to wheel one in versus how much time it takes to pull one in? Yeah. So that will quantify, hey, there is value in this design and what we're doing. I think you also said something about safety. Mm -hmm. Quantify how many accidents are happening or what's happening with ropes done the other way versus maybe what your rope system will do. Because that would be great also if not only convenience of the timing, mm -hmm. but if the safety factor increases because there's less, you know, mess up mm -hmm. um, in the way things are uh, coiled back in manually versus reeled back in, that would be potentially a helpful distinction for your product. Okay, so where are we at? We're at 200? 200. Do we have direction for video I, type versus prototype? I'd like more money for more prototypes or more, more money spent towards prototypes so that you can have some variation mm -hmm. and some yeah. iteration done on the prototypes. I don't know if that would be one of my suggestions. Yeah. When you get through a prototype, if you can, you need another one. Mm -hmm. Talk to Hans and get back to us. Mm -hmm. So, are we, is the direction to skew more of this 200 to at least two prototypes? Or add to it. Mm -hmm. Or add to it. Or, yeah. Yeah. Add to it. I, I'd like to, to suggest we, we add to it, um, add a bit to the 200, but maybe suggest that you um, back the, the Facebook, that, that paid. Work you were saying of the 135, maybe back that down to 100 or less and double what you're planning for the prototype. So that would get us into that 250 range. Okay. Um, so that you can double what you're going to invest in prototypes um, and then cut down on the other for now. Okay. Right. But that doesn't mean um, you, you're not getting feedback from customers. Go find those harbor masters yep. who are getting ready for the season because they're probably still around. Um, so good luck. They have time on their hands before the ice comes off. Yeah, the right, right, right. That's a good time. While they've got time to talk to you. And I would just, uh, a last thing on the timeline, and, and it's been touched upon, I'd really suggest you guys sit down and work yourselves back. And maybe you have this already and it just didn't come across in the presentation. Knowing what you've got to get ready for, develop yourself a very crisp and clear timeline to get some of these things done because it's going to be you know, presentation's time before you know it. And that just didn't come across, and I'm guessing you have more than you shared with us. Really hit yourselves hard on that, because um, you, you got some good stuff to, to sort out. But well done. All right, Thank good luck.